Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's DIYs. They are honestly some of my favorites so far, but before we get started, if you are new here, please do not forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. All right, let's get started. For this first craft, you're just gonna need two packs of these glittery bat stickers from Dollar Tree, as well as these two glass vases. So this craft is super inexpensive, but the end result is so beautiful. So the look I'm trying to achieve is I want it to look like the bats are kind of flying up. So to achieve that, I'm going to start off with these smaller bat stickers and I'm going to be placing them up the glass on a bit of a diagonal and I'm going to stagger them. So I ended up using four of those smaller bats before I started picking up my larger bat stickers. Just be really careful with these, they are a little bit fragile. They do stick to the glass really nicely, but I did accidentally rip a couple while I was putting them on. And you're just going to go ahead and repeat that same exact process for your next phase. These would be perfect for some flowers or for some dried branches. I just put some no flame candles in mine and I think they look so spooky. This next craft was inspired by Sarah Jane from Chic on the Cheap. She made a witch broom very similar to this one and I'll leave her video linked below. So the Dollar Tree items you'll need for this craft is one of these signs. Uh, the friends gather here. We're just going to be using that middle plank. We're also going to need some of the gingham ribbon, a pack of this natural raffia. You will also need a Dollar Tree plunger, These art palettes from the Dollar Tree are not necessary, but I really do recommend them. You get six in a pack and they're so helpful for holding your paint. You're also going to need some paint, of course. These are just ones that I had on hand, so use what you have. If you don't have any on hand, Dollar Tree has a bunch to choose from. And I also picked up this pack of foam brushes just because I love the way that they apply the paint. So to start off, we're just going to rip off that middle plank. And I'm going to be coating it in several coats of white paint. And this did probably take, I would say, about four coats, but in the end, the paint did cover it. Now we're going to start painting the base of the plunger. So this is going to be where the bristles of the broom are. So you basically just want to kind of camouflage that red color. So you're going to see me paint it kind of like a base white color, but then I'm also going to be painting in some yellow. So when the raffia is covering it, if a little bit is peeking in between it, you won't be able to tell. This too is going to take several coats of paint and a lot of patience. While my first coat is drying, I'm going to go ahead and paint my witch broomstick. And I'm just using a nice light gray color for this, but use any color you like. Now I'm just applying my second coat of paint. And once you do the first coat, the second and third will definitely apply much more easily. So this is how it will look when it's all done and everything is nice and dry. Now we're going to attach our natural raffia. So I'm going to start by taking out two bundles. I did end up using three in the end though, as you'll see. So you're just going to want to cut that little tie that's holding them together and you're going to pull them out so they are nice and straight. Once you have it pulled out straight, you're just going to grab it in the center and fold it over itself so it's even on both sides. Now we're just going to attach that raffia to our plunger with some hot glue. So you can see the top here where it's folded over, that's going to be the top part of our bristles. So I'm just going to put a lot of hot glue on and hold it in place for a few seconds. 
Now we're just going to repeat that same process two more times. So just unravel your raffia, fold it in half, and put a ton of hot glue and just press it on. Now I'm just going to get a long piece of twine and we're going to wrap it around so we can keep all those bristles in place. So the way I did this is I just kept a tail in my right hand and then I took the extra long piece in my left hand and just kept wrapping it around until I just had a little bit left and then I tied them into a knot and I trimmed off the excess. Now we're just going to fluff out all that raffia and try and space it out so there's no gaps. And then you're just going to go around and give it a nice trim. Now I wasn't happy with all of the bottom plunger that was still exposed. So to cover that up, I just put some hot glue and I just took some of that extra raffia that we just trimmed off and I'm just gonna stick it onto the hot glue underneath our bristles. And I just repeated this process anywhere that I thought the broom needed it. Now I'm just going to give my broom one final trim and get off all those straggler pieces. And to cover up that twine that we used to hold down all of the raffia, I'm going to use that gingham ribbon. So I'm just going to cut a nice long piece and tie it in a bow just to cover that up. Now that our broom is all finished, it's time to get back to the sign. So here is my plank after several coats of that white acrylic paint and I just printed this Hocus Pocus Broom Co. from online. You can actually find this printout in the description box of Sarah Jane's video which I will have linked below. So here I'm just kind of tracing my sign over that printout and I'm just going to cut out the paper. So to attach our paper to our wood plank, I find that the best way to get the least amount of wrinkles is to actually attach it with some glue from a glue stick and then do a Mod Podge layer over it. I did try this with Mod Podge to connect the paper to the plank and it was just way too wrinkly. So for this, I'm just using the Matte Mod Podge, which I also found at the Dollar Tree. After I painted my first layer on, I like to go in with my fingers and kind of just really push those edges down to make sure that they're sealed on really tight. I didn't want to hot glue the sign to the broom because I wanted the option of being able to remove it in the future. So to get around this, I just put some hot glue on the back of my sign and I just cut another piece of that gingham ribbon and I'm just going to tie the sign to our broom handle with a bow and that way you can have it with or without the sign. This is hands down probably my favorite DIY I've done so far from the Dollar Tree. Let me know what you think below. For this last craft you're just going to need some of these rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree as well as some of this brown craft paper. This black and white thread is also from the Dollar Tree, but if you can find it, don't worry. The regular twine will work just as well. And you're also going to need three hardcover books. So these I already had on hand, so I'm just going to use those. If you don't have any on hand, don't worry. Dollar Tree has some really great options. 
So to start off, we're just going to use that craft paper to cover each of our books. So just like you used to in school, we're just going to cover those books up and just cut a strip that is long enough to cover the book and I just folded it over here. Really simple, nothing fancy. If you want, you can use some scotch tape to kind of secure the edges. The only thing I would say is I didn't use scotch tape on the top book because I didn't like the look of it, but the bottom two, that's fine because you're not gonna be able to see it. Now that our books are all covered, it's time for our letter transfers. So for my three books, I wanted to put all Hallow's Eve, but you could do Trick or Treat or really any saying that you wanted. So I'm going to use this first font for the words all and the word Eve, and then I'm going to use this larger one for the word Hallow's. So these letter transfers are really great. I was so impressed with the quality and they are incredibly user-friendly. So you're just going to cut out each letter that you're going to need separately. And for my first book, I'm going to put the word all. So a tip for this is when you're starting your words, you're gonna to wanna to start backwards just so you have the alignment right. So when you're ready, just peel off that white backing and place your letter where you want it. And you're just gonna rub and it's just going to transfer onto your paper so I'm just using a little tool to help me, but I tried this with my fingernail and it worked really well. So you don't need anything special. Once you rub, you'll kind of see that the letter starts to peel back from the clear backing. It gets a little bit lighter in color and that is when you know it's ready to peel off. But if you start to peel the clear uh, paper off and you see that the transfer is still stuck to it a little bit it's okay just put it right back on and start pressing again until you get all the transfer off here I'm just putting that period to act as my apostrophe for the word hollows and I'm just going to repeat all that process again and just work backwards until I'm done Another way to do this is once you get one or two letters on there, you can actually slip the cover off of the book and work with it laying down if that's easier for you. And you'll already have your alignment kind of set up, so just keep in that same straight line and it will be fine. Our last step is going to be to tie this book stack together. So I'm just going to pull off a super long piece of the string and I'm going to put it over the top and kind of loop it under the bottom, just like I'm tying a Christmas present and bring it all the way up to the top and just tie in a nice bow. I really love this craft because it's so inexpensive but it really gives a great effect and doing it this way does not damage the books at all. I really hope that you guys enjoyed these crafts. This has to be probably my favorite grouping of crafts thus far. And if you like them too, please don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up and a comment below on which one was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching.